We will be looking at face swap, pyrokinase, and CPDS function in Fucus. Let's start with face swap. Now, remember, the tool is named as face swap. It's essential to understand that this tool doesn't simply swap faces between two images. If that's what you're looking for, you might want to explore some other applications like Roop instead. Note that, Focus works differently. It's about capturing the facial details of the input image and transforming the face of the target image to resemble it. You'll notice the resulting image still retains some characteristics of the original. Let me demonstrate this in my UI. I'll start by loading an image of Emma Watson as the input image and a fantasy warrior as the second image. I'll type fantasy warrior into the prompt and scroll down to select the face swap option. When you select the option face swap, you'll see the stop at and wait values update automatically. Once I hit generate, the UI will work its magic to make the face of the target image look like the face of our input image. As you can see, the resulting images have the body details of the second image while capturing the facial features of the first image. However, the results might not always be perfect, as seen in this second image. In such cases, don't hesitate to experiment with the values to achieve better outcomes. As usual, I'll start by increasing the weight to 1 and hitting Generate. However, you'll notice that the faces in the resulting images are distorted. This is because higher values can disrupt the prompt. Let's make it easier for the AI by simplifying the task. I'll remove the second image and ask it to generate an image of a woman on the beach during sunset. In the advanced options, I'll select a style and adjust the image weight to 0.8. Now, during generation, you can see the faces are becoming increasingly similar to the original image. Although the second image still needs improvement, Trying few more times should do the work. This technique works particularly well with AI-generated images. For instance, if you load an AI-generated image of a fantasy warrior and generate with same prompt. You'll see the generated images closely match the fantasy warrior I uploaded below. That's all for the face swap model. Remember to experiment with the weights to achieve the best results. Piracani and CPDS, a powerful tool for image-to-image -image generation. Building on our previous experiences with image prompts and weights, let's see how to maintain the exact pose and figure of an image while adding new details. I will start with a simple example, by loading an image of a woman waving her hands. Then select the Piracani option in Advanced. And enter a prompt for a man waving a hand. After hitting Generate, we should see the result. Note that if you're using this model for the first time, it may take a few minutes to download from Hugging Face. As we can see, the generated image retains the original pose and figure, but with some changes and details. This is the power of Piracani, which can replicate your base image while adding new elements. To further demonstrate this, let's try another example. I'll load our older waterfall image and enter a prompt for a man waving hand, waterfall in background. after generating the image. We can see that it combines the details of our subject with the waterfall background. As we learned earlier, we can control the weights to achieve the desired balance between the original and new details. So, how does Pyra Canis do this magic? To understand how it works, we need to look into the concept of Canny. As part of the ControlNet tool, Created by the same developer behind Focus for image generation models, 
Canny plays a crucial role. So, what does Canny do? Essentially, it detects the structure of the object when you provide one. To illustrate this, imagine increasing the heat wave and sharpness scale of an image to maximum in a photo editing tool. You'll notice the dimension and edges become more pronounced. Canny takes these edges and uses them to generate a new figure, resulting in a remarkable outcome. To demonstrate this, I'll max out the weight and generate the image again. As you can see in the preview, the base image now has sharp edges of a human figure, indicating that Piracanian is applying those edges during generation. CPDS, on the other hand, employs a different technique to achieve similar results. Let me switch to CPDS and generate the image again. As you can see, the outcome is comparable to the previous images, but this time, the foreground and background are more clearly defined. Take a closer look at the edges the background now has more depth and dimension. The key to CPDS lies in its ability to extract depth information from an image. The acronym stands for Contrast Preserving Decolorization Structure, which may sound complex but it simply means that CPDS can create a depth map of an image. It's a way to measure the distance between the foreground and background of an image. When we feed an image into CPDS, it simultaneously decolorizes the image and generates a depth map, resulting in a black and white image, then it is further used to generate the output image. If we compare the CPDS image I generated with the Piracani image, as you can see, the CPDS image has a much more pronounced sense of depth. Before we wrap up this lesson, I want to offer one final tip. Avoid using both CPDS and Piracani at the same time, as they perform similar functions and may negatively impact your image. However, feel free to use them individually. That's all in this video.